Hi guys, this is Mike. I'm back with another uh, Django tutorial for you this week. And this week I'm going to cover the subject of, of logging. Um, now, you may have come across using log files in various other situations if you've done web development in other programming languages. Um, if not, then you should know that it's one of the best ways to help yourself as a programmer and find out what's going on under the hood. Unfortunately, sometimes there are situations where you can't um, get information from an application because it's housed on a server somewhere. And the only way you can actually see what's going on underneath is by putting information into a log file. Now, Django comes with a, a default example of what a log file configuration should be and it's in the settings.py file now here it is it basically has a, a bit of a bump at the top saying a sample logging configuration the only tangible logging performed by this configuration is to send an email to the, uh, the site admins on every http 500 error when debug equals false and then it points you at the Django documentation to say, go and find out what else you can, there's available. So this one will basically um, allow you to send an email to whoever's specified as the admin for this site. So that's, that's all right, but it doesn't really help us very much when we want to kind of find out what's going on under, under the hood. Um, we're going to set it up so that we can actually look inside of a log file and be able to get information about what's going on in our application at runtime. So this kind of setup is not really very useful to us. Um, but before we do that, let's have a quick look through what we've got. We've got inside of this, this dict, we've got uh, filters, handlers, and loggers. So filters is about how the log file gets uh, written out and what it looks like. Handlers is a list or of stuff that of of ways to deal with the information for the log. And loggers is a list of or can be a list of different. Um, instances of a log so in this case we've got a one that basically mails the emails the admin we could have a logger that outputs only um, information about requests to the site we can have a log that only deals with um, secure HTTPS kind of traffic or we can have in our like in our specific case a log or a, ha a logger that will output a file only containing uh, information that we specifically output by ourselves using code. So you can split off uh, log information in various different ways, which is really hand handy because then if you've got one specific kind of problem, then you don't need to go looking through a massive big log file um, hoping to find the answer when you know that it's just going to be in one specific log that is set out specifically for that purpose. So it's handy to be able to, to split out log information. Now I'm going to change this um, to what I need for my local development and in production you may well use a different sentence py file with different login configurations and that's probably something that you would discuss with you know a system admin if you if you've got one on the project or if it's just you then you will probably just agree with yourself to just basically put in something that's going to help you to to be able to manage the application online um, which would be a slightly different setup I reckon from what you'd be doing locally but here's what I do for a local configuration for log files So we've got in our formatters um, a standard format that consists of the time, 
the level, the deep debug, sorry, the log level, which could be debug or error, um, a name for where the where the log message actually came from and what the message is. Then we've got some handlers and I'm splitting off um, some of the information in the log files so that we don't get absolutely everything in one file. Our first one is my default one which is going to basically output using the logging handlers rotating file handler. It will use uh, output a text based file to this path that I've set up and every so often it will archive that and split it off and start a brand new log file so you can then limit the amount of information that would be inside of each log file that you have to go and look in um, instead of ending up with like 100 megabytes worth of text that you've got to trawl through this will limit to 5 megabytes and then it'll split the file and go to something else the next handler we've got is the request handler which is anything for you know URLs and we're going to use the rotate, rotate and file handler again and but this time we're going to stick it in a different file so that we can have that information separated out and again limited that to five megabytes and notice in both of these cases we're using the formatter that we've defined above the standard formatter here so everything should come out with the time the debug level uh, the name and the message and then finally we define each logger that we can use and with this I've got an empty string because this is just the, the bug standard one and it's the default handler that we're going to use for it its level is debug and it will propagate and with the second one the Django request we're going to say it to use the request handler instead so that it will split off these request um, based messages off into the request log and leave my nice uh, my log file alone and put only nice information in there and that's pretty much it that's basically what we'd use so that we can have uh, a nice little setup so that we can output information into log files and be able to monitor what's going on so how do we actually use the logging system well the first step is just to basically in import logging as a module and from that we cr we're going to create a global variable here they're called a logger variable and what it will do is it will allow us in all of our views to be able to call and put logs or information into the log file as we go so we'll make our global variable logger from logging dot get logger and we're going to put the name of this script into there so that when it outputs the section here that we defined within our formatter will output where the file the file name of what we what we're currently sending information from so we'll know the location as well as the time as well as the information that we have put into the log so it'll be easier to track down if there are any problems where they come from so the next bit is I'm going to go down with my search um, view because this is where I was um, I've been attempting to implement some uh, whoosh search indexing and I was basically con in the process of converting my Ajax search which is from a previous tutorial over to using whoosh and I found that I'm not getting any results back um, and instead things that I know I should be able to find in there are not returning any results so I want to know a number of things um, the first thing I want to know 
is have I correctly set up the way that Woosh needs to needs to index the information. So I want to be able to know its schema. And the second thing is I want to know what the search term that was used was. The third thing I want to know is did it bring any results back? So I could just basically try to print this out somewhere, but the better thing to do was to use the logger. So the first thing I'm going to do is just basically put the logger variable there and use its debug method to output the schema of the search. So this will tell me what the schema actually is, whether it's actually coming out of there properly. The next bit is I'm going to put um, another debug log of what the articles are that come back from this search command that I'm doing. And hopefully that should come back with at the very minimum what the term was what kind of search term I put in and also how many things matched how many came back in the results and that'll be a start for me to then kind of understand what could be going on under, under the hood uh, do be warned this is not a, a this is not a tutorial where I am shown to, to have fixed a problem this is just a tutorial where I'm showing how to start trying to fix a problem so um, there will not be a happy ending to this tutorial, unfortunately. Right. Now, what I'm also going to do, as a as a deliberate mistake, is I'm gonna I'm gonna deliberately break the code, so we can demonstrate something that the logger can show you, because this term word should be terms with a s on the end, and in the log we should be able to to track down a problem of why that's happening that we wouldn't necessarily see in the normal output. So I'm going to restart my server. In the search terms box we're just going to put um, Mike and as you can see it's saying none to show. So let's have take a look in the logs right so basically going to use the tail command in this um, if you're on Linux this is easy if you're on Windows I'm not sure how you do this um, if you're on Mac then I think you've probably got the tail command in inside of your terminal or console program so if you find out that there's an, another way to do this and you're on a different operating system please leave a comment in the box below so that we can all kind of share the the, the knowledge around the type of thing so let's do that right so I'll clear these off because those are old messages old logs And if I put this in here, I'm not seeing any results, but I'm seeing schema, body, this, yeah, body title URL. So that's the line of code in my view, just here, outputting what the uh, schema is, but I'm not seeing anything from here. And that's because I've deliberately broke the code here. So this statement isn't actually running. But how would we know that? Because we're not actually saying anything to say that bit failed. Well, if we look in the other log file, the Django request log file that we've sent and split off all the other messages, we should be able to see an error in the Python. I'll just clear that off because that's an old message. I'm just making that scroll up by pressing enter by the way so if you want to know how to do that just press enter in the console. 
Right, so what did we see? Internal server error. And if we kind of ignore all of that bit and look right at the bottom, collector got an unexpected term, keyword term, keyword argument term. So if we look through the trace back, we have line 716 searching py which has nothing to do with us because it's in the whoosh package however our views says on line 129 this line of code here has the word term in it so let's go back and fix that and then if we do a restart on our server just to recompile the changed code we should now see that even though it's still saying there's none to show our log should start and be different so that's still an old log from a few minutes ago but there's nothing else new so that error has actually been fixed so if I now go back to my other log, I can now see that it's logging the schema and then it's outputting top zero results for term body, which is part of the model, which is the body field in the model, should match that. I know for a fact that my schema is correct because it now it, it now confirms that it also says you're definitely searching in the body field of the schema and this is this the uh, term so we know for a fact that the process is at least completing what we don't know is why it is that a term that we know should match something because I've got um, I've got an article here that definitely starts with MIK. What we don't know is why Whoosh is refusing to return results. And that's a story for another day. So I hope you can see the importance of using logs and how, how useful they can be to you because in some cases you may not be able to debug through code. Um, and if you can't then it's a very very tough job after that because it becomes a lot of guesswork and if you can output information into a log file and just watch as things happen then you'll find that it just makes your life 10 times easier and you can debug code on remote servers as well as your own local machine with a, a larger degree of ease okay well, that's the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this tutorial, then please click the like button. And if you'd like to know more about other tutorials in the series, then please uh, click the subscribe button and you'll get a notification as soon as I've published a brand new one, which is usually on a Friday. Okay, thanks for watching.